Hello there, Editing Carl here. Just a quick warning for this video. Normally when I shoot a video, it takes about a week to make. This video took three weeks to make, and this is how the video goes. Here's the product. This is what I like about the product. This is what I don't like about the product. Thank you very much. Subscribe to RT Robotics, and that is the end of it. This video did not go to plan at all, and how, how I had normally planned to make the video, it didn't go to plan. There's a lot of failures in this video, but in the end, we did eventually manage to get the aeroplane in the air. But here's all the failures before that. Hello everyone, welcome back to RC Robotics. My name is Carl, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new model that's just come on the market, and it is the uh, twin liner 40 millimeter EDF Whoa! airliner. Um, yeah, this is from, who's it from? It's from Fly Model. I picked this up from Steve Web Models. Um, I'll put a link in the description where you can go and find your own if you like the look of it. Now, it's, uh, it's a full four channel aileron throttle rudder and steering. We've got um, nine gram servos in it. We've also got, it runs on 4S, 1, uh, 1,300 to 2,600 milliamp power is the best rated battery. We've got 30 amp uh, ESCs in both of the wings for both of the 40 millimeter EDFs. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty big. I can't even really fit it in the frame. Can you see that? Um, so yeah, this is my very, very first EDF. I've never flown an EDF before. And I know what you're saying. You're gonna be saying, oh, why didn't you go for a single engine EDF first? That's probably what best for you. I know, I know. But guess what? It's my channel. I can do what I like. I have no idea how much I'm about to eat my words. So uh, yeah, let's get this box opened up, see what's inside, get building it, and then uh, yeah, hopefully it's ready for Sunday and we can take it to the Great Brew Londa. So let's get building. So this is the box, 40 millimeter twin liner EDF. Now you can get two different options uh, in the shop. They either give you a white one, completely plain, so you can paint it in your own library, in your own stickers, or you can get this one, the twin liner, with, uh, it's got this twin liner red tail on it and little red winglets. And yeah, it's basically not plain. It's got all the stickers and everything ready. And it's just needs you to install the radio gear. That is the one I've gone for. I've gone for the, uh, the one with stickers already on it. Here we have, we've got our right wing. We've got our left wing. What's this? On the carriage. So that is, we've got foam tires there, but they feel like rubber. It's weird. They, yeah, they're definitely foam wheels. Yeah, they run nice. So we've also got some bits and bobs to clean up the underside once you've put the screws in. We've got some Y wires. So we've obviously got power wires for the ESCs. And we've got signal wires for the ESCs because we're running two motors off uh, one receiver. And let's take a look at the wing. Fantastic. Look at that. There's our ESC, there's our ESC in there. ESC, EDF, everything is very, very tidy. Nine gram servo. And there's our EDF, look. Woo! Fantastic. Let's see what else we get in here. Here's our left wing. Everything is extremely tidy. Oh, that pops. Pops up quite easy. Oh, and nice. So we've got a steerable nose wheel. I was worrying about um, attaching that because it's quite a fiddly job usually with a steerable nose wheel, but it's already installed and ready to go for us. So I'm guessing we just sort of attach the wings, attach the tail, uh, bind the receiver, and we should be ready to go. Let's obviously charge my 4S that I've got. So that's the inside of it. Very nice. There's our nine gram servos. Everything is extremely tidy. Got some carbon fiber there for reinforcements. That's good. Neodymium magnets on the hatch, which is all you really need because you're not doing any aerobatics with this model. Let's see the, uh, oh, see that clip? It clips together quite nice. That is really satisfying. Oh, bing bong. One thing I like about these wiring harnesses, look, they're all labelled, so you really, really can't get them wrong in the field. Um, just make sure yellow to yellow, red to red, and yeah, as long as you've got the polarity right, everything should work.
services. We've got elevator, correct. Rudder, steering, correct. Ailerons, correct. Is the nose is lifting off the ground and then I don't have steering. Oh dear, wasn't the best of maiden flights, was it? Um, yeah, well, it wasn't even really a flight. It was in the air for about maybe 1.2 seconds, and then it met the ground very, very quickly. Um, yeah, we're going to have to redesign or rethink this. So, first of all, having said how bad that crash was, or, you know, that smack on the ground, what a solid plane. It's still in one piece. Not a crack, not a, barely a mark. There's a couple of marks up here. I think that's from the ride home in the car. Um, everything's solid. Even the nose. The nose isn't even crumpled in. It's just a whole load of mud all over the nose. So we need to clean up the nose. And I've got a problem because my club, as a fantastic as club as it is, as smooth as the strip is for you know, decent sized models, these wheels are way too small now. As you've seen in the fast taxi tests and the taxi tests, it rolls just fine. It uh, it goes forward just fine. It gets light on its feet just fine if the ground is nice and smooth, basically as if it's tarmac. If it's a gris grass strip like mine, unfortunately it's not coming off the ground. Now if you try and hand launch it, you see exactly what happened. It just winged over straight away. So there's something we can do about this. Um, I'm going to take the undercarriage off. I'm going to get some foam board and some carbon fibre and some wheels. Let's build a dolly. Yeah, so I bought this, just sort of, oh we'll do a quick video on it, fly it, and take it and then I'll load it to YouTube, and I've still not been able to get it off the ground yet. Biggest problem is, uh, the summer of this video, if you're going to buy this plane, you've got to make sure you've got a runway, because we've got a lovely flat strip here, but the, the wheels are way too small for it to get off the ground, to get enough speed. The dolly, same problem, hand launch it, you can't hand launch it, so today we're going to try a little, uh, little bungee cord. We've got a little hook, it's 3D printed, it's on the bottom. It's got bungee cord that's already out there, so let's go out because everybody is anxiously waiting to see this in a thousand years. Let's go. Just pull it back until it won't go any further. Is that it? Yeah. Don't buy one of these if you haven't got a strip to take it off from. Um, because yeah, it's just basically a paperweight for me. I've tried my best, tried the dolly, tried the wheels. Uh, I cannot get it off the ground, so yeah, just don't bother buying one if you haven't got the, the, the runway to take it off from because they need speed to take off. <sighs> so we're here at the club and we're gonna have to give it one more go with Dolly Parton or Dolly Carton, and then if that doesn't work, we're gonna try a bungee one more time. And if that doesn't work, I'm publishing the video anyway. So you'll see in this video now if it works or not. Um, yeah, it's got a lot more hot glue in it than it should. It weighs even more than it should. Oh, 
I'll tell, the, I'll tell you what, anyone who can get that in the air will be a proper tosser. They'll be known as Club Tosser it forever. It's only a bit of a shove to get it going. Woo! Look, I've lost it. <laughs> it's on! <laughs> that was a bit touch and go. It's heavy, that's the problem. I, I needed a bigger battery. I can't keep up with this. Might nice, slow down the strip. No, I couldn't see it, mate. Nice and low. Low and slow. So in summary guys, this is a fantastic model if you've got the right uh, area or the right environment to fly it from, i.e. a tarmac strip, if you want to use the wheels. In the end, I did manage to get some success with um, the launch, so you basically need to make a hook for the bottom of it, but then our every single landing where I was landing it on these engines, they were ripping off and I had to basically hot glue them the, for the next flight. So it's not great without the wheels. So please, the whole point in this video now has turned from look at this beautiful plane, look how well it flies. The summary of this video is just please, please um, consider your surroundings and consider your airfield before purchasing one of these models. So thank you very much for joining us here at RC Lobotics. If you like this content, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It is just up there in the corner. And if you'd like to see any more of my videos, I'll pop one down in this corner. One down in this corner and another one right up in this corner. Thank you very much and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.